Hello. Welcome. Welcome to my yurt. I'm Peter. The yurt is 24 foot in diameter and we have a couple of outbuildings as well. Well, we've got 14 panels here. I got two on the roof and I've got a portable one here. Uh, we're doing some of our power for our yurt. We're running the fridge and basically just the yurt. I'm installing a, a heat pump and I want to get it to go to 220. So and we also have an electric car. We have a Tesla that we've also used this for charging it as well. I also have a little scooter that I've modified here so that I have an inverter in it and I can charge that with solar as well. One of the things that's a little bit different for us than most people here is that we don't have any generator backup so we don't have any gas generator so I wanted to get like a solar generator so that I didn't have to have gas on site um, and so I looked at those and I could buy a scooter for almost the same price with the same capacity of lithium battery and I thought huh why don't I just modify it which I did I rewired it and then put this stuff in and uh, yeah now I can scoot around as well so this is a 48 and this is a 52 volt battery so this inverter works fine with this it's a 3000 watt this is um, a basically um, they call it an MPPT solar charge controller it's taking um, the solar or the um, yeah the solar panel voltage and it's boosting it so that it can charge the battery and then I just have a another converter here that's that's taking all the, the um, the 52 volt down to 12 volts so I can run my fridge or any sort of 12 volt appliance off that. But mainly just to use it so that I can go down to my little garage and I have power down there because I don't have any power in and it's really fun to scoot around on. So anyways, like I said, it's a 24 foot yurt. We've had it for, I think about 15 years now. Besides not having gas power generation here, our generator, we don't have any wood burning either. We don't burn any wood. So that's kind of unique. So it is really a seasonal. You know, we, we come out here end of March, beginning of April, and we stay until the end of September, beginning of October, and then we just shut the whole thing down. The ceiling's all insulated with Alberta wool. Um, I cobbed the floor. So this this foundation is, um, is a really strong foundation. It's basically two by 10 sitting on two by six, which is insulated with a rock cell. And then on top of that, I put about three inches of cob. And then I ran PEC pipe all the way through it so that I could use it for um, a heat base for both cooling and heating. That turned out it didn't work, unfortunately. But anyways, it was a real adventure trying to cob all this and then we put cork down on top of that. And then this back here is kind of a standalone, I call it kind of my, my very small house, uh, tiny, tiny house. And it's a, it's a freestanding unit inside the yurt. And we've built a bedroom and a bathroom on the back of this. And, Obviously the kitchen is just an IKEA kitchen on the front. Again, it's self-contained, but if you come in, we've all, we soundproofed this. So we've got um, two by four and then two by six on the roof. It's got rock cell um, soundproof insulation on it. And then we ran resilient channeling, which is metal stripping all the way around. And then we hung the drywall off that. And it makes for a very soundproofing because the bathroom is right next and the yurt can get quite loud with rain and wind and that sort of thing so it's it's uh, nice to have this as an option you can close the door and it's more like a conventional house so why do you live in a yurt it was easy for us to build it was cheap we didn't know where our house was going to go we thought it would be transportable in that sense or something that we could do it was sort of less permanent we had a friend who had a yurt and i just fell in love with it i thought i would really like to try it um I think, I think my wife would have thought that I would have gotten tired of it after a while, but I haven't. I just love it. And then we, in here we have a little bathroom on the other side. Washer and dryer, toilet, sink, and our hot water tank. And then up top we have a ladder that connects here, which is over there. So again, it's an Ikea ladder that just hooks onto here. We did have a bed up there and that was kind of our guest room it has been for a while it's actually quite a really nice space but right now it's just full of junk so we're using it for storage mostly the new addition that we have is an induction top cooker which everyone should have I think um, yeah it's an IKEA stove 
basically was pretty simple to put together. I have a couple of solar panels that are sitting up here that I run through in my jackery. I just like to utilize my lithium batteries that I have, and this runs our entertainment system. I can't remember exactly what we paid for this, but it would be just a fraction of what it would have cost us to build a building of that size. So the outbuildings that we built here, so that's just barely over 100 square feet. Our year, it's almost 450 square feet not including the loft space, and that outbuilding costs more than our yurt did. So now we went and modified, we've got a lot of woodwork and that sort of thing that would really make the price go up, but still, um, the basic yurt was much, much cheaper. And I just got a utility trailer, went to Vancouver, loaded it into the back, backed it up here, and we just set it up with some friends. So, I, you know, just from that perspective, it's, uh, it's very, yeah, it's great that way. And we have these two outbuildings. So this is what we call our computer room. It's a little bit of a mess because no one's been in here. You can see I have a wind turbine here that I had set up last year. So this is just conventional. It's all 2x6, 2x10, super insulated, and it's also really quiet. So it's a, it's a nice space as well for our guests and stuff. And like I say, we have our, our computer and, and office sort of set up here. Our bathroom here. So we have our shower, a 10 claw foot tub. Other people in my family said, oh, oh we need another shower. This, we, we just don't want to use an outdoor shower and the bathtub isn't really, but love it. You know, now, now the, our shower in the other room is used as storage mostly. We have a little greenhouse and then a bunch of raised beds here. And this is all gravity fed we have a tank behind our yurt. We have 12, 1,200 gallons of, of storage of water back there. And so this is all automated and it, and it uh, waters our garden on a, like on a daily basis. It, it's interesting when I come back, we have a conventional house somewhere else. Um, when I come back here, it takes me you know, a week or two to adjust. And I go, oh, you know, it fe I feel more exposed. I feel, you know, like I, you know, it's un in a sense almost uncomfortable in some way and then I get used to that and uh, yeah and I think it's really good for me because when I go back to my conventional house exactly the same thing happens I feel kind of restricted I feel like I'm in a cave I feel yes and having a shower indoors is just like well this is crazy you know so it, it's an interesting adjustment but you can adjust and it takes me actually um, yeah, not just days, but probably a week or two for me to get accustomed from one to the other, which very much of a contrast because when we're back in our other house, we're wintering in a, in a, in a prairie situation. So it's, you know, we're getting extreme minus 30 cold and that side of things. So you're really inside a house, super insulated. I wake up in the morning, look out the window and, you know, there's, there's been a storm that night I didn't even realize it happened. Here, you definitely know everything that's happening you can hear the bees fly by you know it's it's uh you're you're much more out in nature and i think overall what i've learned about for myself is i think that's good for us or it's good for me anyway so i just i'm just and this is just a, a happier place for me than than a conventional house this is a work in progress but this is where inside here yeah you know, we're gonna we have our another bed but we're gonna have we have um, another toilet here, we have a sink, this is going to be the little kitchen, we have a shower back in here, which I said is being used as storage, and this is my sort of solar laboratory, what I'm working on right now. It's kind of dark, you can't see, but I've got um, a bunch of AGMs, and I've got what I call my van lithium battery hooked to my van um, inverter, which I'm using. This one I have to use for my well pump is a this is called a low frequency inverter. The other one's a high frequency, which runs, it actually runs the fridge and the yurt just fine, but wouldn't do the well pump, which I needed as for, for backup. Wouldn't do the, the um, um, Tesla for charge. This needs this for the Tesla for charging, and we need this for running the, the heat pump as well. But this running by itself uses more power than the fridge does on a daily basis. So there, it's really uneconomical in this small system to run that. So I only run it when the sun's shining and I use that to charge my lithium battery while it's running. So it's kind of a hybrid system right now, which I would definitely like to change all over to hybrid or over to lithium. 
So our roof was going to fill this, but in the summer, it's just not enough rain. So we actually, I have a system where I can fill it with the regular water with my well, and then we just let it sit for, yeah, run it for a week or two, and then just keep filling it up. And we also, um, if you want to come this way, um, it's also connected. I have a transfer pump that I can pump out of this. It's also connected to a sprinkler system, which I can spray everything, and we can use this for fire, fire prevention. So if we lose power, we still have a water source. So what this div subdivision was designed for was to protect the, the forest. And um, this was used to be owned by a logging company, and so now we have set up a, um, a forest management system, and I think that being part of that, like it feels like I'm in a park and I'm protecting the park, that this forest, and that and that gives me uh, a lot of satisfaction. I really like that. Well, I don't know. It's about five years ago, or maybe a little bit more. We had wolves denning about 50 meters off the end of our septic field. We'll sort of have a little walk through there, and I'll show you where they were. Um, they were very interested in Kyra, but they didn't come in. But they would sit at the end of my septic field, a bunch of them, and I'd I'd come out here and go, take off, go, go, and they would just sit there and sort of grunt, <laughs> and then they at night they would surround our yurt, and they'd howl. And that's maybe one of the disadvantages of being in a yurt, because we sat there and went, my wife was going, I want a brick house, I don't want this to be in a tent when this is happening, because it was really quite interesting to have that. Yeah, and they stayed around for, um, yeah, a couple of years, actually, but we haven't seen them for a while. But they, yeah, and if we went for a walk, they'd follow us through the woods. Very interesting. And they're big, they were about 150 pounds, big, big wolves. Yes. And one time I came up and I walked up, I'll show you where the rock is. And I walked up and I, there's a bit of a clearing and I took a look and there was all of the, so we have surveying tape that hang from trees, like the little colored strips. And it was all torn to bits all over the ground. And I bent down like this and I was looking at it going, oh, these wolves have been playing it. And I looked over and there were two standing there staring at me. And I just stood up and I went, okay, I'm leaving. And I came back and sat in my yurt and I was just like shaking. And I've had bear encounters and I've had all sorts and nothing shook me quite like that did. And they just were looking at me like, what are you doing in our space? Mm -hmm. So that would be a disadvantage of a yurt. Find the things that make you happy. Um, look for those. Um, yeah, that's hard for a lot of us to do in this time. and. Uh, it's uh, it's it's a struggle, but um, I think that that's that's important. And 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 to know what makes you happy, that's about experience. You have to experience different things, I think, and then figure out where you are on that spectrum and and what you need to do. So the yurt in the summer makes me happy. That's for sure. So I really enjoy it. Thanks for watching. And if you enjoyed this video, please share it with a friend. Also, if you want to watch more Alternative Dwellings, we've got a playlist popping up right here, and we release new episodes every single Sunday, so consider subscribing.